We're gonna rinse. <gasps> Look at that blonde! It's a miracle! <laughs> See that? Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. Hello, hair bestie. <laughs> we are here with Colleen. You've seen her before on my channel multiple times. She's a good friend of mine. And we're gonna do some fun techniques that I'm gonna share with you today. It's gonna be air touch versus backcombing technique. I mean, which one do you do? There's so many ways to get the final results. So we're actually gonna do half of her head air touch, half of her hair backcomb, and it's gonna be exciting because sometimes you go two different techniques, but you go to the same destination. So let's take a look at her hairs. You can see her natural level is seven. So a seven is considered a medium blonde. It's so crazy how everyone doesn't realize anything above a five here six seven eight nine is considered blonde on the swatch but now everyone's conditioned to believe that blonde is right here like level 10 bleached out like on your ends here they don't see what natural blondes really look like it's crazy right crazy before we get started you want to subscribe okay click thumbs up hit that bell I work really hard on these videos okay show me some love so I could keep on showing you you love okay and share more techniques but you gotta hit that bell and thumbs up and subscribe okay all right let's get started <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna use lift me up on you colleen so before we've always done the pearl formula on her which looks like this in the bottle this is a formula that we've always done on colleen today i want to switch it up and do an ombre of two tones so we are going to also use the rose which is the formula you see up here now on the swatch here it looks super super pink so it could be frightening to the eyeball but know that when you mix it together also you have the option of creating seven different shades here with lift me up so we also have the bright formula which is a gold formula I'm not gonna use the bright formula on Colleen because she doesn't need the gold tones in her hair she likes the tone to be cooler to go with her features that she has and the tone that she has so with that you can see here this is the dusty rose formula so this is the combination of mixing the pearl blonde with the rose blonde you get that dusty rose which is gorgeous so we're gonna ombre through the back here down into the pearl and the best part is that we don't need to use anything above a 20 volume today you can do 30 volume you can do 40 volume but with Colleen I don't want to overlift her, so 20 volume will be all you need. So you have a mixing ratio chart. I put it on my phone. I'm actually gonna blow it up right over here on the side. This is gonna be where the menu is. Do yourself a favor, screenshot it. It's gonna be your mixing ratio chart. You're gonna have three mixing ratios. Now, you will traditionally use the first one, which is the original standard lift. It's gonna give you the perfect lift and deposit. It's gonna lift six plus levels, but if you want to lift more, like seven levels, you could do the center, which is the extra lift soft tone. The difference here is you're using less of the toner and more of the lightener or bleach, if you will. And the third option is the extra lift max tone. Now with that formula, you're actually only mixing more bleach in it. You double the scoop of lightener in it and you're keeping the same toner mixing ratio as the first one. So that way you're getting your maximum lift and your maximum tone deposit. Today, I'm gonna do the standard. We're gonna get started with the first formula. We're gonna do the rose and pearl together. So Magnum 8 is our popular lightener that everyone uses. If you're not using Magnum 8, then what are you doing? You're missing out. And you don't wanna have FOMO, do you? Okay, so 10 grams. Okay, so we're gonna mix 14 grams of toner. So 14 grams of toner means, because I'm mixing these two together, seven, seven makes 14. Seven. Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. I know it looks scary purple with the pearl color. I do want to put on my hand here so you can see how pigmented they are. But don't be scared because as I wipe, you can see it's not going to turn her hair purple. As we shampoo it off, it's toning her hair, right? And also the rose, I know it looks very, very vibrant, but you can see that it's very, very soft. It's not that scary. All right, now that we have equal parts of the toner in that makes 14 grams, now you need the oil booster. You're going to do 14 grams of the oil booster in your formula as well. And the important thing about the oil booster is that it encapsulates 
oscillates the toner to make sure the toner stay alive so it doesn't get eaten by the lightener so it could tone your hair. So always use the oral booster when you're using the Lift Me Up formulation. Now we're gonna do 40 grams of 20 volumes. This one mixing ratio goes a long way. So you can see in the bowl here, this is the pearl and the rose in Magnum A and the Velper mixed together. We're gonna whip that right on up with that 20 volume. Look at that color, It coin. looks like an ube cake. Ube! Like the batter, you know. But I promise your hair won't be ube. <laughs> your hair isn't gonna be purpley. Okay, so that is formula one. So formula two will be the same mixing ratio, but we're gonna mix it with pearl only without the rose. We're gonna do 10 grams of Magnum 8, so 14 grams of pearl. Okay, so 14 grams of the oil booster. All right, so we're gonna whisk this right on up. This is the pearl lift me up. So this is the rose with the pearl and this is the pearl. Look how gorgeous the lift me up system is. This is gonna go on your hair and it's gonna give you the most perfect blonde. Can you believe that? I trust you. Yeah. Yes. Is it crazy to look at this and go, I'm gonna be blonde? Yes. If I didn't know you and know your work, I would not believe it. And this is where it's very important is to talk to your client. Communication is key. Let them know that what they see in the bowl or what they see on their head isn't gonna be the final result. Are you ready? I'm so ready. Let's get started. Come on. All right, so what you want to do is section the hair into one, two, three, four, five quadrants. Now, with doing the air touch technique, yes, you can just go all the way up to the top with four quadrants, but what I like to do is I still like to over direct the top section to the front. That's why I section off this way. And then the parietal, because I like to do the face frame money piece, I want to focus on that separately. The back section, I want to do it independently on its own, you know, with the two different techniques. I'm going to show you. So air touch is going to be on the left side and then we're going to do our back comb on the right side. I love doing back comb. I love doing air touch. I don't want to have to choose. So I want to show you how both of them will get you very similar results, if not the same sometimes. So when you section the hair off here, you can see the hair underneath is a lot shorter in the nape. So if I pull this out, you can see it's shorter than the hair on top. You can skip that if you want, but if you want to highlight everything, then highlight that in. But the cool thing is you get to blow the shorter piece within this short piece out so you get to highlight everything. So we're gonna clip this up out the way. We're gonna be prideful so we're gonna have rainbow everything, rainbow combs, rainbow clips. I spent most of my life not being proud in my teens and early 20s so now that I hit my 40s I'm gonna be proud and I'm gonna celebrate it colorfully with all of us. <laughs> so take a look at this section here. So with the air touch technique what you want to do is use your blow dryer with the nozzle on it. You want to hold the hair out. Now you blow dry at the base. Now sometimes I blow dry at the ends but mainly I blow dry at the base. But the reason why I would blow dry on the ends to push the ends out is if the ends get caught and it doesn't want to come out. But you start here like this and you'll see all the short pieces just come out. So within this short piece underneath, this short section in the nape still has shorter pieces within the short piece. So that way you can see here, you can still highlight the nape area if you want to, but leave the short pieces out. So look at this length and then look at this length. Look how insane this is. So you see this short, long, and then you drop this one. This is even longer. So every slice of a section has short pieces and long pieces within it. So you get to do back to back if you need to. And blow drying near the scalp will help you not have have to like remove all the little T section out as much, but sometimes you're unable to do that. Grab your foil board, lay your foil down. Look at that. You're gonna use your thumb here to hold the hair in place. So I'm gonna use the first formula. First formula will be the rose and the pearl together. Now with this, I'm gonna stroke it all the way down. You can ombre it, but I don't want to put the pearl here. I wanna put the rose with the pearl here in this area all the way down, right? You can see that she has no blonde down here, so I get to really bring this formula all the way down. Before we move forward, I want to show you the swatch. So this is our end goal result. You can see that's a very soft, delicate, dusty rose. Now when in comparison, right here next to the actual product on the hair, it can look frightening, but I want you to be confident that this is the result you're gonna get. So you could choose to do foil overlay or you can fold the foil up. Now, here's the difference. When I do foil overlay, what I find is I get to ombre, do multiple formulas, and if I want to lay different formulas in between and do a color correction, it's a lot more easier. But the problem with this sometimes is that when I go back in and I'm trying to do the air touch above it, it can blow the foil away. And I'll show you what I mean. Take a look. So if I was to put the blow dryer here, the air would blow the foil right off. 
and that is a situation. And that's why I don't like to do that because I prefer foil overlay. Now let's say I was to do a foil packet. Let's say I fold the foil up into a packet like so, right up in here. If I go above it and blow dry the hair because it's in the packet, it's not gonna blow the foil away. So it depends on the method you're using. And that's why when you're leaving a comment below, always think about those things too. It kind of helps you understand why we all have different techniques and different methods and never judge someone based on the video of why they're doing it that way. So instead of me blowing right up here at the base, at that routage area, what I would do is I'll blow dry right away from it and I'll go like this and I'll do just fine and I won't blow the foil beneath it away and I get to just move and stretch the long hairs out of the way the same way so with this method sometimes you get like a little pillowing right up here at the scalp but sometimes when you do what I do is I'll put the foil up here and if I want to get closer to the scalp I'll just use my comb and I'll do that and that way you could push all of that short hair back so there's that one method so let's go ahead and paint the first formula on that base area I still like to get as close as possible to the scalp just like that feather the product you don't need much now I'm gonna go in with the second formula. Second formula, I'm gonna feather the pearl down to the ends. Now, keep in mind, this is gonna be very cool, very smoky, and you can see the tone right here. Look at how beautiful that looks. So we got the pearl with the rose, pearl down here by itself. This is the lift me up, and it's gonna turn to a beautiful blonde. Now, you're looking at that, and you're seeing that it looks very, very cool in tonality. So let's look at the swatch again. So this is the result you're gonna get. You're gonna get a very cool, smoky pearl blonde. So believe what you're seeing here in the swatch. Don't let the tone of the product frighten you. So with that being said, I'm going to keep moving up and I'll show you another way that I like to do the air touch technique without blowing the foil beneath it out of the way. And this is a method that I enjoy using too quite often that you don't always see me do, but it's another method to avoid it. So this is kind of reverse air touching. So instead of blowing down, because if you were to blow right here at the rootage area, you could blow this foil out. Even if you're trying to fold the foil up, sometimes it can move the foil around. I like to blow upward like this so you, when you're blowing up you're getting all the short hair out of the way like that and now all the short hair is there and all the long hair is here but now because you reverse the blow gravity will naturally want to make this drop on so what you do is use a clip and clip the short hair out the way and here you are so there's ways to do this that can work with you and your client's hair type or the technique or maybe you're doing a color correction that might work with you so that's why I want to show you so many methods and ways to do it there's no wrong way there's no right way as an educator I've been educating 17 years now right and I find that sometimes people tell you're doing it wrong and they'll shame you for it there's only one way to do it it doesn't make you feel good it doesn't make you feel creative I want to show you that there's more ways than one to do a technique again this is another method maybe if you're doing a certain color correction I'm gonna do the pearl first this time I want to show you how you can create a stick factor right at the ends. so the stick factor is making the ends stay put by putting the ends formula first. So now that you're doing that, it creates a stretch and tension near that base area. So now when you go in with your second formula, you can just feather this up without holding the hair in place because the hair is holding itself in place with the product. And I'll go left to right like so to ensure that I get the hair underneath. And the cool thing about the lift me up is the texture of the product, the consistency of the product. You don't have to work that hard. The product sinks its way in. So you're gonna do a four overlay so you see how I did literally three different air touch methods on each section as I go As I was working up Colleen's head, I discovered that I love actually using the clip because look, 
you can put the clip on to the next section and work your way up. See that? So we make discoveries as we start testing out all the techniques and all the methods of doing that technique. And I find that this is the most convenient because I like to do foil overlay. I don't like to do the packing. And that's why this method is such an important method to do in the salon when doing color corrections. You have to incorporate this technique. And the, the situation with us as humans is sometimes we get too comfortable with what we're good at and we stick to what we're good at and we're not evolving. And it gets boring when you're doing what you already know you're doing for the last 10, 20 years. You have to evolve and do these different techniques I'm showing you so you get to move forward and be excited of what you're doing. When you're not evolving, sometimes you can be dissolving because the worst is when you're feeling burnt out and getting bored of yourself because it's normal to get bored of what you're doing even if it's what you love. Sometimes we get bored of what we love and that's not healthy. <laughs> you need to be excited always and this is how to do it. And I'm excited now because as I keep doing this technique more and more, I learn new ways to make easier and I share it with you as I learn these new methods. See how I leave the ends out? Always leave those blonde ends out. You don't want to overlap them. So leave them out and watch. Next section, so the clip beneath it, clip it right there. And then you get to work the next one right above it. How easy is that? And you're moving along pretty quick. I'm gonna do this section and then I'll do the back comb on the other side. All right, so on the right side of Colleen's hair, we're doing the back combing technique. But I am backcombing with the board now, which I find to be more convenient than the past that I have backcombed. And I'll show you this method. I'll take the slice of hair, you can see here, and you put the board right underneath that slice with the foil. This is really important. And you take your comb. I prefer a comb that's really thin so you get up close to the scalp. You will hold the length of the hair with your thumb like so. And while the hair is on the board laying flat like so, what you do is you tap just one time and you're doing the exact same thing you're doing here. But instead of blowing the short hair out, you're pushing all the short hair back and you're able to push that short hair back and tuck it away behind the board. So you can see right there, you're able to tuck that hair back with the comb. So you're only highlighting the long hair, allowing you to go closer to that scalp. So that way, when you rinse out her hair, it's not that much work with the back comb because it's only pushed back one time. And this allows me to get up really close, right in through here. You can see here, I can get really close up to that routage area as close as possible with the backcombing technique. And I can still do the ombre. And this is a lot different than the air touch because you're not using the blow dryer and you don't have to put things down and set things back up. But it is more of a juggling right here with the comb. And I feel that it's harder to do color corrections this way because if you need to get the hair and lift it in between the foil or low white in between, you're unable to do that with the back comb. But if you need to do something quick and get a job done that's very similar, you could do this. And you can see here, pull the board out. I got really close up to the routage area. There's no blow dryer involved, but I would say that it's only about a centimeter of a difference because with the air touch technique, I got a centimeter closer to the scalp where this, there's a cushion pushing you away, but it's really only a centimeter. So it's really not much of a difference with the eye unless you really look up close like this. So that being said, I'll do one more here so you can see. I'll do a slice across and at the end, we'll compare the difference. We will look at the left, we'll look at the right and see which method we like more, air touch or back comb. So this would be like a big deal for us as hairstyles. We'd be like, okay, which method do I want to do? Okay, so you still want to take a thin slice because I'm doing every single section. I'm not leaving any slice unfoiled. Everything is getting foiled. So this is a pretty thin slice here. Always do thin when you want to get close to the scalp. I feel like a lot of times in the past, we always try to take a thick section and that's where we have a bunch of bunching because in the past we're doing this back combing and we, we don't even know what we're back combing we're just back combing random sections the back combing method is to push the short hair back and highlight the length and that's what it's for but for some reason we don't know that in the past we just randomly back comb and random parts get highlighted random parts didn't so again you need to use your foil board and a long foil would be nice because her hair is long and notice my thumb and my finger here, I'm holding the length. You don't want to hold up here. You want to have access to the short hair. So you only want to hold the length down so you get to tuck everything back. So remember, we're all about representing our pride. So I got a rainbow comb here. So again, you see how flat this panel is. Now you're able to tap and you'd be surprised how you only need to tap one time. Look at this, look at that. Literally one time. 
I got all the short hair back. Now you see, this is a lot of short hairs. Imagine highlighting all of that when you don't need to. So now what you wanna do is push it as flat and far back to the scalp as possible. And by tucking it back behind the comb, look how close I'm getting to that routage. Most of your product you want to place in the mids area. Then you want to feather the product slowly up to that routage area. The reason why I do that is because that way you get most of the packing in the product through the mids so you don't get any smudging near the scalp. So a lot of it is just feathered through. And the cool thing about the Lift Me Up here is, look at this, it penetrates right through without effort. I get to spread the product and not worry about damaging the hair. Feather it down like so. And before removing the board, you can lay the foil right over the top, nice and flat like so. And then move the comb out the way and repeat and do this all the way throughout the whole entire head and you're done. Pretty much pretty simple. So I want you to leave comments below. <laughs> Tell me which method you want to do more, which method you like to do, which method you think is more time saving or more creative or would you use both? In my preference, I like to use both at different times. The air touch excites me because it's more of a newer method that's been introduced this last five years. I've heard about the air touch for a long time, but I realized that there's so many different ways to do it. There's no wrong or right. And that's why I want to show you all the different ways to do it. And the same thing with the back combing technique. I'm going to move up Colleen's whole entire head doing the back combing technique on this whole entire side. So you get to see the comparison and we'll be right back. So, I am done finishing <laughs> foiling Colleen's whole entire head. She probably has like, I don't know, 300, 350 foils in here. There's quite a bit. I wrapped the foils away from her face and you can see a lot of her natural level seven is hanging out here, the little short pieces. You have an option of glazing it. I wanted to kind of glaze it with a dim eye to kind of have a continuity of tones and stuff like that. But I'm gonna leave it out because I want you to see how simple and commercial or relatable this is. Our lunch came. I don't know if you ever eat with your client, but I love eating with my client. How do you feel about me eating with you? I love it. <laughs> we love to eat. We love it. I always see your food videos on yeah. Instagram and I love them. Uh, it makes me want to well, try I all the new eat. things. <laughs> what you got? Chicken? I do, yeah. And right and sushi rice. I got chicken too, but mine are grilled here. How is you and your mental health? I know that mental health is a conversation to be had. It is. I'm actually doing pretty well right now. What about you? When the pandemic situation first started in 2020, I needed a break, to be honest. I didn't know how much I was touring and how much I was never in the same place you know, for more than a week. And I was burnt out. I didn't get to spend time with my dog for like over five years. And all of a sudden, like people were passing away. My dog passed away. My grandma's passed away. And I was like, I need to slow down. I need to spend time with the people I love. And I regret it so much. And I had to live with that feeling. And so learning how to say no was the hardest thing for me because I'm a people pleaser. I, I want people to be happy. And it made me sick, to be honest. And so I've been working on trying to say no. I was on this toxic reality show with toxic people and it made me sick. The way everything was run made me felt sick. Like I felt like I was in high school again. You know, I felt like I didn't know who my real friends are. But then what really brought me back is my message of my identity. I know that sounds crazy, but I'll look at the, my color box and I remember my message of what my identity, what identity means, what this brand means to me, the message of of being true to yourself and never forgetting that. And a lot of times on social media, sometimes we can lose sight a little bit. What really helped me get through a lot of it was actually singing and songwriting and mm -hmm. making music. Mm -hmm. My music was a huge escape that saved me from being burnt out. And then to sometimes read comments about like, stick to hair, stick to your day job, stick, stick, stick. I said, come on, they people put you in a box. I said, I'm not just hair. Right. I love hair. 
but I have a husband, you know, I, I have a family, I have things I, you know, love to do. I love working out, I love spending time with myself, I love singing and songwriting. All of my friends are singer songwriters, and when I'm not doing hair, that's what I'm talking about. And to see that people reject that side of me and saying that I need to be in this box for them to love me was actually really, really painful because people love you how they want you to be for themselves. It's like they love you when they can benefit from you. But all of a sudden, when you no longer benefit them, where are they? And then you realize, do you really love me? Do you love me for my true authentic self? Because if you love me for my true authentic self, you would know I love singing songwriting. You will know I love my husband. I love my family. And I love working out. And I love dancing. And I love drawing. I draw all the time. And, and photography. You know, I used to study photography. I do all these things which actually supplement my photo skills for hair. It also supplement how I see color. And that's what people don't think about. You have to do all this to kind of supplement each other. And our mental health is so important. And for so long, people forget that your brand is you. You are who you are. You shouldn't just do everything just because, oh, I'm here, I gotta do that, you know? I wrote a song called Show Me Love because it, on my album it's about like, I constantly give love and education to people, but they don't give the love back because people like to take, 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 but mm. they don't want to give back. Right. Have you experienced something similar in your life? Definitely. You know, I, I obviously, I do the modeling thing and I act and do photography, but I love writing and I share my writing and yeah, it's emotional. It's gross sometimes, you know, they aren't pretty feelings, but I put it out there and I mean, I'll get two likes, but if I post a picture of my bare butt, hundreds. So they want to see your butt, uh -huh. you get all these likes, but then you post something personal, no engagement. No engagement. How does that make you feel? It used to make me feel a lot like my personality or who I was didn't matter. That I mm. only mattered because of how I looked. You know, actually during the pandemic I did a lot of, because nobody was seeing me, you know, and it wasn't really, it definitely wasn't a time on social media where people were posting pictures of mm -hmm. themselves living their best lives. And so I was able to sort of step back and be like, you know, I don't really care if, if this doesn't get hundreds of likes, that's okay. But if one person sends me a message mm -hmm. and says, I have felt that, I've been there, like that is success to me. That means the world. And I know with your songs, people yeah. reach out to you all the time and say, oh, you're yeah. saying exactly how I feel. That's got to feel so good. It does. Well, success is measured by how happy you are, not only by numbers and how much money or fame. And that's where people get twisted because that will never fulfill you. Mm -hmm. And also, all these algorithms, like just, oh, Instagram and TikTok, all the, they have all these algorithm stuff mm -hmm. now so people don't see the beat that's personal to you. So yeah. you can blame that too. <laughs> totally, <laughs> totally. Know? I'm just really grateful to be here with you in this space and to have forged this friendship through all of our art. It's difficult in LA to find people that you can be your authentic self. Thank you for that. But speaking of LA, LA has great weather, mm -hmm. great food, great diversity of different cultures. That's what I love about LA. You could have so many opportunities here. But with that, it's hard to find really good friends because a lot of people who come here, they're kind of hustling, yeah. if you know what I mean. Oh yeah. And people always glamorize the hustle, but nobody wants to get hustled. No. Nobody wants to be hustled. Nobody mm -hmm. wants you to climb on them no. and, and take advantage of. Do you know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. you know when people tell you to hustle, yeah. it's like you gotta hustle, you gotta get up, but then no one wants to get hustled on the other right. side, you know what I'm saying? Of course. And that's where it's very hard to be in LA because you feel like you have to hurry up. Then you also have people who's trying to hurry up on top of you <laughs> and, and climb on you and you're like, you know. <laughs> like a stampede. It is like a stampede. So that's why this relationship is very authentic. 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 Okay, now we're gonna eat and then we'll be back. Yes. <laughs> All right, it's that time. We're gonna pull out now. She has like a million foils in here. <laughs> so I can't wait for you to see this. Okay, so I'm pulling out slowly and you can see right through here. Now you're like, oh my gosh, that looked like a berry purple pink or what's going on here? Oh, look at this. Look how gorgeous this looks. So you can see right here. Look at that. You can see the blonde coming through and that iridescent tone. Oh, look how pretty that looks. It's so natural, so beautiful. How you feeling? Good. Okay. Look at this. Look at this. Wow. Whoa. Okay, so you're seeing like this berry purple magenta blue thing going on. You're like, what's going on? We're gonna rinse. <gasps> Look at that blonde! It's a miracle! <laughs> See that? Oh, that's gonna be so pretty. 
right in through there. Look at that. See, it's not as crazy. It's very soft and delicate and natural. Oftentimes we get scared when we do the first pull up, but you gotta trust the product. So you can see here where the blonde is, that's where the pearl is. The pearl completely neutralized the gold and yellow in the hair. It gives the hair this nice, cool blonde result without toning. It did it all in one step. This is how amazing Lift Me Up is. The Lift Me Up system literally just tones the hair for you. So you don't need to go over it the second time. No shadow rooting, no toning, nothing. It creates that violet toner for you so you're able to get that cool blonde. All right, I'm gonna pull out all her foils and we're gonna shampoo her. So we're gonna start off with shampooing her hair with Guy Tang, my confidant color securing shampoo. This smells really good. And this is what Colleen uses at home, right? Yes, it is. That's why your hair looks so good still That's after right. a whole year. <laughs> That's true, use a good product. All right, so then I'm gonna rinse her hair out. Just like so. The next step is my Hero X2 Collagen Repair Spray. I will spray this throughout the mids and ends of the hair and leave it on for about three minutes, massage it throughout, and this helps close the cuticle to the hair and you get to feel how the hair feels a lot more soft. So after X2 has sat on the hair for a good three minutes, you're gonna put the My Confidant Color Securing Conditioner over the top and process for another one minute and then rinse and that's it and you're done easy as that one step no toning so this is time saving for you and your client Tell me why. With Colleen! <laughs> Her hair looks beautiful. Iridescent describes the color, doesn't it not? It does. Look at it, it's so pretty and it's wearable. And the thing is, you get to do this color however you want it. If you want the rose pink tone all over, you can. If you want the pearl blonde all over, you can. It's up to you, you intermix it, you place it wherever you want. But most importantly, I wanna show you the technique result. On the left side, we did the air touch technique inside. So we're opening her up right now. You can see the air touch technique gets really close to the scalp. You can see the dimension. And on the right side, as I open up her hair, this is the back combing technique. The color is more diffuse and softer looking. When I put all of her hair down, the results look very similar, but only when you go up into the scalp, you can see the definition and more of the highlight dimension closer to the scalp with the air touch versus the diffusion from the back combing. I wanna know in your opinion, after seeing it up close, which technique would you do? Would you rather do the air touch technique or or the back combing technique because they both look pretty similar which one is more of your style and can you see the difference in the two with that being said the lift me up is pretty amazing I do want to show you the swatch for lift me up so you can see this is on level 7 see that pearl highlight right here in the front it matches right there that level 7 now we did the combination back over here with the rose and pearl blonde together so let's put it right next to her head. Look at the result right in through here. She's looking just like that. And again, if you want to be even more pinker, obviously with 30 volume, but I don't want that. I want her to look natural. And can you believe that? Lift Me Up was able to lift through previously colored hair, do it in one step with low volume developer. Her hair still looks healthy and there's no damage at all. And you get all this dimension. Colleen. You're happy. I'm so happy. I'm happy too. <laughs> so I hope you like this video. Thumbs up. Leave comments below. You can check out all the products at Cosmoprof, Armstrong McCall, as well as our new Solanery.com website where you can search for Guy Tang Madani products and also MyDaniColor.com. So you can get all of the Lift Me Up color and check out my music on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. I work hard on it, okay? So show me some love, okay? And I'm gonna give it a teaser of my music video right now. Bye. What does it take for you to make time to show me
show me, show me love, show me love, show me, show me, show me love. What does it take 